from verse 15 until verse 18. Let's read this together. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So friends, we started by saying, be careful then. So what's wrong with life then? So that we are reminded to be careful on how we live. Where earlier, the Apostle Paul was talking about the difference between light and darkness. That's why he said in verse 8, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So we were once in the dark. We were once living as foolish in the dark. Because in the dark, we don't see anything. You can do all kinds of wickedness in the dark, and no one would say it. But the moment that light comes, then suddenly everything is exposed. Everything is exposed. That's why a lot of people hate light. Why? Because they are exposed. They want to live in darkness because they can do anything in darkness. But the moment that light comes, then suddenly things change. That's why when Jesus came into the world, he came as light into the world. And he was resisted because he exposed the wickedness of man. And so we are told here, as we continue on reading verse, uh, verse 9, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. That is the fruit of the light. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. So friends, things done in secret are shameful. We are told here that the fruitless deeds of darkness is shameful even to mention in the light. And so, that's why he said, Wake up, O oh, oh, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So wake up, you who are dreaming, you are sleeping, you are dreaming. Come to reality. Say, come to reality. So friends, when you are sleeping at night, it's so good to dream. You can dream to become a millionaire, and in your dream, it's so good. So you have this and you have that, you got good food. You are driving a good car. You are living in a mansion. That's all in your dream. And the moment you wake up, you wake up into reality that you are living in that small room. You wake up into reality that you are hungry and that you go down to, the, to, the, to, your, uh, to your ground floor and open the fridge and there's no food on the fridge. Reality comes. And yet in your dreams you have everything. Then you go down to your garage and there is no car there. Then you get to take the TTC. That's reality. But when you are dreaming, everything is good. And a lot of people, friends, are living in dreams. They are living in darkness. They are sleeping. And so we are told to wake up. Come down to reality. And the reality, friends, is that we cannot save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot provide for ourselves. We need someone greater than us to save us. Because we ourselves are too weak to do something good for ourselves. So he said that be careful then how you live. So if this is the situation in life, then be careful then how we live. Amen. Be careful how we live. Don't just uh, live in, uh, in dreams, wishing things, and yet doing nothing. And so, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. So the distinction now, friends, darkness and light, 
Now here comes unwise and being wise. How can we become wise? So we are told that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. The moment, friends, that we realize that we cannot do anything. And yet we know for a fact that there is judgment. We know for a fact that there is a place that awaits the wicked. And it's so hard for us to go on our own to go where the righteous would be. Then the fear of God comes. The fear of God comes. And the fear of God drives us to God himself. That's why in, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6, we are being driven to God himself. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Say that these are the commandments that I'm giving you, not just for you, but for your children. Not just for you, but for your children. Because eventually, we go to chapter 4 of uh, Deuteronomy, verse 6. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all this decrease and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. See, we are driven, friends, to the word of the Lord. Said, you go, get the word, impress it upon your children so that you become a people, you become a nation, and then men will know that you are wise. You are not a fool. You are wise and understanding nation. Amen. So the fear of the Lord will drive us to himself, to God himself. The fear of the Lord is just the beginning, friends. Then when you have the word with you, then comes what? Wisdom. Knowing what is good and what is evil. That's why in James chapter 3, verse 13, that wisdom will be displayed. That wisdom will be seen. Because in verse 13 of James chapter 3, who is wise and understanding among you? So who is wise among us? Who is understanding among us? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. So we have to show it, friends. Who is wise? Let it show your wisdom. Let your wisdom be shown in your own life as you live your life. Amen. Because it will show whether you are fool or wise. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, we are told here, who is wise and who is a fool. Matthew 7, verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So who is a wise man? A wise man is one that lives a good life. A wise man is one that hears the word of the Lord and do it. Amen. That is a wise man. A foolish man is one who hears the word of the Lord and does nothing about it. That's foolishness. So let us be wise. Amen. Let us be wise. And the Lord has been giving us words upon words, encouragement upon encouragement, but how are we responding? 
How are we responding? So let us not be fools, but let us be wise. And I believe, friends, that we are all wise here. Amen? Are we? Amen. Amen. Show it. Show it. Say it. Okay. What does wisdom, uh, how, does we, how does wisdom benefit us? So we are told, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Then, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So we are told, friends, that if we are wise, we seize the opportunity. We take hold of the opportunity. We don't let the opportunity pass by. We don't take the opportunity. Go. So we seize the opportunity. We take advantage of the open door. Let's not wait for the door to close and then suddenly, wow, I want to go in. It's closed. When it was open, you didn't want to go in. So when it's open, you go in. Don't wait for it to slowly close it. Oh, it's true, it's true. But by the time you get to the door, it's already closed. So don't do that. So be wise. When there is opportunity, seize the opportunity. Amen. Don't delay. Don't procrastinate. Friends, there is a story. I, I, I really like this story that uh, Jesus had said uh, that was written in uh, Luke chapter 19. That is Zacchaeus. You know who Zacchaeus is? Zacchaeus was a small man, a short man. And yet he was known as a chief tax collector. You know, a tax collector during the time of Jesus is a cheat. He's, uh, he's a deceiver. He cheats. He takes advantage of his position. And he is chief among the cheats. He's the worst of sinner. That's, that's his uh, reputation. And he was wealthy. He was wealthy. And so look at him. He's like a small, is t terrible. <laughs> And so this man, one day, he heard about Jesus passing by. Maybe he had heard about him before. Maybe that was not the first time. But, you know, when you are rich, friends, you have no time for him. You don't have no time for him. You know why? In our reading today, chapter 18 of Proverbs, verse 11, the wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it an unscalable wall. See, the, the wealth of the rich, the people that are rich, they imagine it as a, a city, strong city, as a fortified city. See, barricaded city. That the wall cannot be scaled, you cannot even go, no robbers can go in. And so they are so secure, supposed to be in that situation. And this was Zacchaeus. He didn't care. He just accumulated wealth. But one day, Jesus was to pass by his place. And he heard about it. Friends, he did not have to think twice. This time, said that opportunity... See, when opportunity comes, seize it, hold it, go for it, when opportunity comes. And so this time the opportunity came for him to see Jesus face to face. And yet, friends, he could not. He could not see Jesus face to face. Why? Jesus was surrounded with people and he was a short man. Jesus passed away. I couldn't see him. People are taller than him. But friends, all obstacles should be overcome if we desire to see Jesus. Amen? We should overcome all obstacles. Firstly, he was a sinner. For him to go see Jesus, there must be something happening in him. Amen? He was rich. But I believe that that riches did not give him the security that he was looking for. 
He was not happy where he was. And so when he heard Jesus, let me go see him. And when you are rich friends and you are known in the city, you don't do foolish things. You don't do foolish things. You want to maintain your status as someone who is rich. They bow before you. But here comes Zacchaeus, seizing the opportunity. He don't want to miss the opportunity. Said, so who cares about what people say? You know, if I give them the reason why I will do this, they will laugh at me. They will ridicule me. Oh, the short man, the short man. Said, I don't care. I don't want, I want to see Jesus now. I don't want to postpone it another time. No. Today is the day of my salvation. So he ran to the tree, sycamore tree. He climbed up there, an old man, a rich man, a wealthy man, climbing a tree because he was short. He didn't care. He didn't care. He went up because that is the only opportunity for him to see Jesus. He overcame all obstacles. The man around Jesus was not an obstacle because when he was up there, he got a vantage view. He could see Jesus clearly, and Jesus could see him clearly. And many times, friends, we need that kind of a, of a decision that we would like to see Jesus in a way that we could see him clearly, not to be blurred by people around, not to be discouraged by people around, by the teachings of people around. No, we want to be alone. He was alone, friends. He did not grab a friend and say, come go with me to church. Come go with me and see Jesus. No, 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 no. He went alone. Climb up the tree, regardless of what people would say. Maybe, maybe if, you would be, if you are Zacchaeus, would you do that? Would you run up a tree and just to see Jesus? You are rich. Remember, rich people command their money to serve them. I don't need to go up there. I could call Jesus, come Jesus. I don't, need to go to, I, do, I don't need to go to church. I call the pastor, come serve me, pastor. I don't need to go to church. I can command my money, go. Serve me. But in his case, no. So he went up. So what happened after that? He saw Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a good story, friends. He saw Jesus. And I could uh, always relate to that story because there was a time when I saw Jesus and things changed. Things changed. That's why here we are now told, when Jesus reached this path, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. He said, come down, Zacchaeus. I, you know, if I put myself there, I, that's why I, I'm really feeling high today. Just imagining the feeling of Zacchaeus, one who had been despised by men, one that is looked upon as a thief. And yet somebody cares, somebody would like to eat with him, somebody would like to have dinner with him. And said, so Jesus, Jesus said, come immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. And all the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Friends, Jesus would come to your house. Are you a sinner today? He would come. Just do that effort of wanting to see him. He will come. Amen. Don't believe people. When they said, no, Jesus would even come. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. So decision was made. He said that I don't delay. I did not delay going up to see Jesus. Now that I've seen Jesus, I don't delay. Here and now, 
That's why I said, no procrastination. Here and now. Make a decision here and now, not tomorrow, not next week, here and now. He said, Lord, today, in the past, my possession, my wealth is my God. To prove to you that you are not the God of my, my life, I will give half of my possessions to the poor. You see, I, what is the use of this money? What is the use? So he said, no, Lord, today half of it I give it. And to prove to you that I indeed have, I'm serious about this. If anyone among the people here I have cheated, I will restore four times. Friends, if Zacchaeus would do this, what would be left of him? Nothing. Because remember, he was a thief. And if he restores everything that he, he stole and restore it four times, what would be left of him? Nothing. But he said, Lord, my life is your life. I have surrendered my life to you. Friends, that should be our attitude. And the Lord said to him, today, say, not tomorrow. Because Zacchaeus said, here and now, today, Lord, at this moment, he repented. So what did the Lord say? Well, Zacchaeus, today, salvation has come to this house. Because this man, too, is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. So today is the day of salvation. Don't postpone it. Don't try to justify what you have done. Zacchaeus did not justify. He admitted, I cheated. So what's wrong with accepting and admitting that we have sinned? We all have sinned. I have sinned. I have my own weaknesses. You ask my children, they know my weaknesses. You ask the leaders, they know my weaknesses. I don't hide myself. I live in the light. I don't live in the dark. What's wrong with that? If I live in the light and you see my weakness, then you can help me in my weakness. But if I hide in the dark and I have all kinds of weaknesses, who could help? Nobody. And so with you. Amen. That's why let's take every opportunity because we know that the days are evil. So making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. We are living in a wicked and perverse generation where right is no longer right, but where wrong becomes right. Friends, this is the society that we live in. So much perversion. You, know, you cannot walk safely on the street now. In your own homes, in our own homes, there is wickedness coming. Right? In the past, we can hide from all this. We can run from this. Today, no. In your own cell phone, there is wickedness. Wherever we go, how can we overcome all this? That's why we have to seize every opportunity to repent. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So the next thing that we get to do, friends, after seizing the opportunity, is to understand what the Lord's will is. What is the Lord's will for us? Uh, many times she said that, well, uh, the, the Bible is actually full of uh, instructions, guidance, and uh, encouragement where we could know the will of God. So again, this should move us, pursue it to Scripture. And one of those that we have been propagating many times is that be joyful always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. That's one. And yet there is a greater will of God when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to us, and then in John chapter 10, verse 10, the second portion, when Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. That is the will of God. Amen. 
The will of God is that we will have life and have it to the full. A prosperous life. That is the will of God. And yet in the same verse, Jesus said that there is this thing that will come to, de to destroy and to rob you of the will of God. See, my will, Jesus said, is that you will have life and have it to the full. A full and abundant life, a prosperous life. That's my will. You will be healthy, you will be wealthy. That is my will. But he said that, you know what? That's my will, but be on guard. That's why we are told, we are told earlier, be careful then how you live. Be careful how you live. Because the first part of the verse, John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, but remember this, the thief does not come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What will the thief come? To steal, to kill, and to destroy? What will the thief come to steal, kill, and destroy? He said, he will come to steal, kill, and destroy that which is my will to you, for you, and this is the abundant life. See, I will kill this. That's the devil's will. I will kiss this, the abundant life that God promised. I will steal it. I will destroy it. So Jesus said, remember, the thief does not come. Then be careful then how you live your life. Amen. Then be careful how we live our life. Will we allow the devil to come to steal, kill, and destroy that which God's will for us? We don't. But how can we overcome? How can we overcome? That's why he said, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand the will of God. Don't be a fool. Be wise. Amen. Understand the will of God. And then he goes on to say, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Again, contrast. Light, darkness, wisdom, foolishness. And what is this? Spirit. Two kinds of spirit. A spirit of wine, a spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. He said that don't get drunk on wine. Don't be a drunkard. Because if you are, then the Holy Spirit will not be with you. We said earlier, friends, the thief does not come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The only way, friends, that we can overcome is when we have the Holy Spirit with us. Because in John chapter 16, verse 13, we are told that the Holy Spirit will come to guide us and to teach us all things. He will lead us into all truth. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. But again, there is another impostor pretending to be the Holy Spirit, and that is the spirit of alcohol, drunkenness. And we are told that the drunkard will be Will this, this wine will lead to debauchery. What is debauchery? Debauchery is extreme sensual enjoyment. It's like a wild party where you have no control over yourself. Friends, I was once that. Like, I was once that. That's why I, I, could, I could relate to this. When I didn't have the Holy Spirit, I was a drunkard. And I just thank God for my sisters that used to clean my mess. You know, they used to clean my mess every time I go home. You know, I can control myself and... <laughs> I thank God for my sister, especially my younger sister. Oh, they used to do the work. Did I gain anything? Nothing. I used to have a lot of friends. A lot of them. We have happy hours. We used to go together. And yet, friends, in times of challenges and trials, they won't be there for me. They will depart. They will abandon me in times of trials. They are only good when we are there in front of the table with all those drinks that we had. And when I received the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I lost them all. I lost them all. I don't think that there is one that was left. 
when there is no more beer at home, when I no longer join them somewhere, I lost them all. Only to be replaced by good friends. People that are like you. Amen. People that would come and pray with me. People that would come and lift me up. Because that time I thought that that was my solution. That I thought that that was my joy. I thought that that kind of spirit would give me fulfillment of life. When I am drunk and oh, everything is good. So wake up, wake up. You are drunk. Reality is that you go home and your wife will be waiting for you there. Your children will be waiting for you there. Reality is that when you go home, you have a headache. That's reality. Now, oh, everything is fine. You go home. That's reality. That's right. Wake up, wake up. Amen. And many times, friends, we are not only drunk with wine, but we are drunk with our success. We are drunk with everything else that we have. As if this is life. I have it all. Friends, wake up. Reality is we need God. We need the Lord. Amen. These are all temporal things. Reality. We got to go back to reality. And so when I, le- when I lost them all, and they were, I considered some of them as really good friends. Did I regret my decision? Did I say, oh, okay, let me go back to them? Friends, I did not regret my decision. You know why? Proverbs says that the fools, or only fools will go back to their vomit. <laughs> Amen. My sister, already cleaned, my sister already cleaned me. And I wanted to go back to that. I said, no, only fools will do that. That's why we are told. Do not be drunk with wine. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Because even in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, we could see the power of the Holy Spirit. Not only as we preach the word, as we share the word, but as we live our lives. That's why we, we are told, uh, James chapter 3, verse 13, who is wise among you? Show it by the good life that you live. Amen. Who is wise among us? Show it by the life that we live. And so in Acts 1, this is the life that we live. Because he said that, but you will receive power. See the power to overcome? When the Holy Spirit is upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. How can we be a witness, friends, if we live a defeated life? How can we live? How can we be a good witness if we ourselves are living a defeated life? Would, would people believe me? No, they won't. Because I am living a defeated life. But we are told that when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall have the power to live holy and blameless life. And I tell friends that this is a message for us. Personally, not for somebody else. Personally. Amen.